a stadium 350 meters in the air, as high as a 100-story skyscraper. 46,000 fans suspended between two mirrored towers stretching 170 kilometers across the desert. Saudi Arabia says they're building it, the Neom Sky Stadium, ready for the 2034 World Cup. But here's the problem. As of late 2025, it only exists as concept art. No construction, no blueprints. The question is not just can they build it, it's can they build it in time. The Neom Sky Stadium is part of something big a $500 billion experiment to build a city that doesn't exist yet, in a country trying to completely reinvent itself. Saudi Arabia has spent decades being known for one thing, oil. But oil won't last forever. So Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman has a plan. Build the most futuristic city on Earth, attract millions of people, create a new economy that doesn't depend on what's buried underground. And at the center of this plan is a stadium embedded 350 meters high within a vertical megacity, if it gets completed, it'll host one of the biggest sporting events on the planet, the FIFA World Cup. But projects this ambitious don't just succeed because someone has money. They succeed or fail based on engineering, timing, and whether the world actually believes in them. Let's break down what's really happening here. To understand this stadium, you first need to understand the line. The line is a proposed city stretching 170 kilometers across the Saudi desert. Two parallel skyscrapers, each 500 meters tall, running side by side. The entire city fits between these two giant mirrored walls. No cars, no roads, everything stacked vertically. The Saudis originally said 9 million people would live here by 2045. That number has been revised down to just 300,000 residents by 2030, and possibly 1.5 million by 2045. A sixth of the original vision. The Eniom Sky Stadium is designed to be embedded within the upper levels of this structure, set 350 meters above ground, integrated into the line's mirrored megastructure, fully built into the building's frame. A typical stadium weighs between 50,000 and 100,000 tons. You're taking that weight and integrating it into a megastructure hundreds of meters in the air, within a building that needs to remain perfectly stable while supporting millions of people. One structural floor one miscalculation, and you don't just have a stadium problem. You have a catastrophic failure that could affect the entire section of the line. And here's the catch. The stadium can't be built until the line's vertical structure reaches the necessary height and stability. The two projects are completely intertwined. Neom's overall budget is estimated at $500 billion. That's more than the GDP of 150 countries. The stadium itself doesn't have a publicly disclosed budget but industry reports estimate between $1 billion to $2 billion. However, construction at this height and complexity could easily cause significant overruns. For context, the most expensive stadium ever built, SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles, cost $5.5 billion, and that's sitting on the ground. But here's where it gets complicated. Saudi Arabia is already scaling back Eniom. Population targets have been reduced dramatically. Construction is progressing much slower than originally announced. And the timeline is brutal. FIFA awarded Saudi Arabia the 2034 World Cup in October 2024. The stadium needs to be operational and fully tested by late 2033. Construction is scheduled to begin in 2027, with target completion by 2032. That's roughly five years to build. Most mega stadiums take four to six years under normal conditions. This is a stadium embedded 350 meters high in a city that doesn't exist yet, being built in one of the harshest climates on Earth. And as of late 2025, only conceptual renderings and preliminary design outlines exist. No final blueprints, no approved engineering solutions, no construction has begun. The math is starting to look impossible. Building a stadium at 350 meters means dealing with wind forces that ground level stadiums never experience. At that altitude, wind speeds can be 30% to 40% stronger. The structure needs to handle not just 46,000 people, but constant lateral pressure from wind reaching 100 kilometers per hour or more. Tall buildings naturally sway, that's normal, but a stadium needs to remain stable enough that players can perform at the highest level and spectators feel safe. You can't have the pitch moving during a World Cup final. According to Neom's promotional materials, the solution involves advanced damping systems and structural supports integrated into the line's framework. But those systems have never been tested at this scale. 
at this height for a structure with this much live load variation. When 46,000 people jump simultaneously during a goal, that creates a dynamic load completely different from static weight. Engineers call this crowd-induced vibration, and it's already a challenge in ground-level stadiums. Now multiply that challenge by the complexity of a stadium integrated into a 500-meter tall megastructure. Then there's climate control. At 350 meters, you're exposed to much more direct sunlight and higher UV radiation. Saudi Arabia has experience with air-conditioned stadiums from the 2022 Qatar World Cup. But those were on the ground. At 350 meters in the air, every ton of cooling equipment adds to the structural load. A typical large stadium uses 5 to 10 megawatts during an event. At this altitude with extreme climate control needs, you're looking at 15 to 20 megawatts, the same as 15,000 homes, and emergency evacuation. FIFA requires stadiums to evacuate in under eight minutes. How do you evacuate 46,000 people from 350 meters through a building that's only 200 meters wide? Multiple high-speed elevators, emergency staircases, rapid transit moving thousands per minute, all built, tested, and FIFA certified. These aren't hypothetical problems, they're real engineering challenges without proven solutions at this scale. Saudi Arabia says the stadium will be powered entirely by renewable energy, mainly solar and wind, as part of NEOM's net zero mandate. The Saudi desert gets over 300 days of sunshine per year with some of the highest solar irradiance on Earth. But powering a stadium at 350 meters with extreme cooling needs requires approximately 80,000 to 100,000 solar panels. The stadium is embedded within the line's structure with limited roof space. The surrounding mirrored facade reflects sunlight rather than absorbs it. The solution likely involves solar farms across NEOM's desert, supplemented by Red Sea wind power connected to a smart grid. Saudi Arabia has made real progress on renewable energy. They have some of the world's lowest costs per watt for solar production. But can they build that infrastructure fast enough to power a stadium by 2032 while building the city around it? Final power sourcing, grid integration, and backup plans are still unconfirmed. The renewable goal is ambitious, but it hasn't been tested at this scale in desert sports infrastructure. Energy systems need to be tested and proven reliable before FIFA certification. In October 2024, FIFA awarded the 2034 World Cup to Saudi Arabia. They were the only bidder. But hosting a World Cup has non-negotiable requirements. FIFA demands world-class stadiums meeting specific safety standards, capacity requirements, and operational capabilities. Venues must be completed at least a year before the tournament for testing. Saudi Arabia's bid includes 15 stadiums across five cities. Most are existing venues needing renovation or new stadiums on solid ground in Riyadh and Jeddah. The Neom Sky Stadium is the outlier. The 350-meter-high, 46,000-seat stadium has been confirmed in the official bid though as of late 2025, only conceptual renderings exist. Final designs and engineering solutions are still in development. FIFA has accepted ambitious projects before. Qatar built seven new stadiums for 2022, but in every case, there was a fallback plan. If one stadium faced delays, another could absorb matches. With Neom, there's no easy fallback. The line either exists at sufficient scale or it doesn't. If by 2028 or 2029, this is still primarily digital renderings, FIFA will have decisions to make. The 2034 World Cup won't be canceled. There's too much money invested. But the venue list can absolutely change. The Sky Stadium will host World Cup matches if built on schedule, but that's a massive if. So why take this risk? Why build something this complex, this expensive, this uncertain, because Saudi Arabia is fighting for its economic survival. Oil currently accounts for roughly 40% of Saudi Arabia's GDP and 75% of government revenue. But the world is shifting away from fossil fuels. Electric vehicles are growing. Renewable energy is becoming cheaper. The long-term trend is clear. Demand will eventually decline. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman understands this. His Vision 2030 plan aims to diversify Saudi Arabia's economy before oil revenues collapse. That means tourism, technology, finance, entertainment, and sports. Sports has become a centerpiece of this strategy. Saudi Arabia has invested in Formula One, golf's LIV tour, boxing, and football. They've purchased Newcastle United, 
and attracted football stars to the Saudi Pro League, with contracts worth hundreds of millions. The 2034 World Cup is the crown jewel. It's about proving Saudi Arabia can compete globally, attract international visitors, and position itself as a future hub for major events. Neom Sky Stadium represents the ultimate statement of ambition. If they pull this off, it becomes an iconic symbol recognized worldwide, appearing in every World Cup broadcast, every tourism campaign, every conversation about the future of architecture. But if it fails, it becomes a symbol of overreach, a futuristic rendering that never materialized. The stakes couldn't be higher. This isn't just about football. It's about whether Saudi Arabia can successfully transform from an oil kingdom into a diversified, globally relevant economy. And they're running out of time to prove it. Right now, we're witnessing a race against time. Think about what needs to happen by 2032. The line needs to be built high enough and strong enough to support a stadium at 350 meters. Final engineering designs need approval, wind testing, structural calculations, evacuation simulations. That process alone typically takes 18 to 24 months for conventional stadiums. Then, actual construction, moving materials to a desert site, building at altitude in extreme heat, coordinating thousands of workers, managing global supply chains, the renewable energy infrastructure, solar farms operational, smart grid tested, backup systems in place, all while the rest of NEOM is still being built, and FIFA certification, test events, safety demonstrations, every seat, every exit, every system meeting international standards, all in seven years, starting from a project that exists only on paper. Compare that to reality. As of late 2025, NEOM has cleared land and begun foundational work, but construction is progressing slower than projected. Population targets have been scaled back, timelines extended. The gap between vision and reality is growing wider, not narrower. Many dramatic images you've seen online of the Neom Sky Stadium are fan-made visualizations or speculative designs, not official blueprints. The reality is far more uncertain than renderings suggest. Saudi Arabia has the money, the motivation, world-class engineering firms. They've hosted major sporting events before, but they're attempting something that defies conventional wisdom about what's possible in the time available. A stadium at 350 meters, embedded in a city that doesn't exist, built in one of Earth's harshest environments, ready in seven years. So here's what we're watching. Will Neom Sky Stadium become the most iconic sports venue on Earth, a symbol of what human ambition can achieve? Or will it become the most expensive stadium never built? A cautionary tale about the limits of even unlimited budgets when facing physics, time and reality. The answer will reshape how we think about mega projects and what Saudi Arabia can achieve as it races to reinvent itself before the oil runs out. By 2030, we'll know if this is genius or fantasy, and the world will be watching. If you think this Saudi Arabian mega project is ambitious, wait until you see what China just did. They turned an entire mountain range into a massive solar farm. The scale is absolutely insane, and it's already operational. Click the video on your screen right now to see how they pulled it off. And don't forget to support the channel by subscribing or checking the link below.